Okay, so today we're going to start chapter 3. Okay, chapter 3 is on lines and angles. Uh, we're not going to be doing any proofs in this section like we had um, yesterday. Okay, so we're going to start off by talking about uh, different kinds of lines. Okay, parallel and, and perpendicular. So parallel lines are basically lines that are coplanar and they never intersect. Okay, so parallel lines have to be drawn in the same plane. Okay, there's another type of line, or two lines, when you draw them, they don't intersect each other, but they're not parallel either. Has anybody ever heard of those kind of lines? When you draw them, they don't cross, but they're not parallel. And it can only happen when you do it in 3D. Yeah, it's when they're on separate planes, and that's called skew lines. Okay, they're lines that don't cross, they don't intersect, but they're not in the same plane. Okay? So as an example of that, imagine two lines, okay, different planes, maybe one going across, say, the front of the board, and then one coming out of the board. Okay, the two lines, if they're above and below each other, they wouldn't intersect. But these two lines are not considered parallel. Okay. To be parallel, they have to be in the same plane. Okay, now those are parallel. Okay. Any question on the difference between parallel lines and skew lines? So parallel never cross, but they're in the same plane. Skew lines, they never cross, but they're not in the same plane. Skew lines look more like that. Okay, and then we can also have parallel planes. Okay, those are planes that do not intersect. Example of that would be if you took like, uh, to visualize it, two sheets of paper, put one above the other, those are parallel planes. Okay, so let's look at this diagram. So here I've got two lines. Okay. How would you name the top line? Well, how would you pronounce it? Yeah. Line AB. Line AB. You could use this symbol. Okay, that's the top. That's the symbol that represents the top one. And then the bottom one would be line CD. Okay, if we want to say that line AB and line CD are parallel, this is how, how we can write it. Okay, and I should actually, I should have this symbol above it. Okay, what that means is line AB is parallel to, that's how you pronounce these these double vertical lines, is parallel to line CD. Has anyone ever seen that symbol before to, rep to mean parallel? A couple people? OK. Well, now you know. That's how you can say parallel, put double vertical lines. Okay, in our book, when they draw it as a diagram, and they wanted to draw two lines that are parallel, that's how they usually would do it. Okay, they draw the two lines, and then they put these red triangles. Okay, so if we, when we get into a, a later chapter, and they have a parallelogram, let's see if I've got one. Oops, that's a circle. Okay, if you just draw a shape like that, that's not a parallelogram unless it's labeled as a parallelogram. What they'll do is they'll draw in the triangle there. They're usually shaded in to show you those sides are parallel. And then they'll put a double triangle like that to show you that these sides are parallel. 
Yes, it's kind of like the idea of using the, the tick marks to show sides that are sides that are congruent. Well, this is showing sides that are parallel or lines that are parallel. Okay, any question on that? Okay, our book happens to use red, but they really they could be any color. Okay. But most of the time you'll you'll see them in red. All right, so here's an example. And I want you to think of this cube, okay, each segment as being part of a line. Okay, so pretend that these sides, they continued on forever. Okay, and I kind of drew an example here with AB. Okay, pretend it just keeps going. I have a few different questions looking at this diagram I want to try to figure out. Okay, first thing I want to do is I want to find a line that's parallel to AB and contains point D. Anybody think they see a line for, for that? Parallel to AB and it contains point D. Kira? Line DC. Yep, line DC or line CD, either way. Good. How many lines are there that are parallel to line AB? If I asked you to count, how many? Mm -hmm. One. So this is the only one? Yeah. Um, no, there's actually more. There's a few more. So it's the only one that contains point D, but there are other ones that are just parallel to AB. Um, yeah, yeah the three in addition to AB. D, C, D, that's parallel. G, H is parallel. And E, F, those are all parallel lines. Well, each pairing is in the same plane. A, B, and C, D are in the same plane. They're in the top plane of the cube. Right. So that's parallel, but yep. the bottom plane is not. Well, A, B, and H, G are in the same plane. They're in a plane that would go diagonally. Think of the plane as going this way. And I'm saying that this edge is parallel to the bottom edge. Right? And then um, a vertical plane between AB and line EF. Right? So there are all, all four of those are, are parallel to each other. Right now, next one, I want to find a line that's perpendicular to AB and contains point D. Okay, what would be a line that's perpendicular to AB and contains point D? Oh, Justin? Yeah. yeah, line what? Go one more time. DA. Yeah. DA, yeah, or AD. Okay, that would be the front edge of the cube. Okay, that would be perpendicular to AB, and it would go right through point D. Now, it doesn't look like there's a right angle there, but that's because of the perspective you're drawing it from. Okay, you have to visualize what a box would look like. And the left edge of the t on the top and the front edge, those are perpendicular. Okay, so line DA. I'm not picky about the letters here. If this was a ray, I would be. You've got to be careful. Um, but generally, when they name lines, they'll use alphabetical order, but that's okay. Okay, now I want to find a line that's skew to AB and contains point D. So skew to AB has to be in a different plane and contains point D. Tender? Uh, yeah, DH, that's one. DH and AB are skew, and DH would contain point D. Anybody see um, another one? There's actually a few here. They only asked for one, but Katrina? Line CG. 
C G. Well, that wouldn't contain, that would be skew, but it wouldn't contain point D. It's got to contain point D. Yep. D G. D G, let's see. Uh, yeah. D G would be in a different plane, and it would also contain point D. And I think there's one more. Anybody see the last one? Yep, Anthony. D. Which one? D. Yeah, D E. D E is in a different plane, and it would contain point D. Okay, very good. All right, and the last one for. I want to find a plane that's parallel to plane ABE. So you're going to name a plane with three letters. And it contains point D. Just to make sure we know, what, what side of the box is plane ABE? Top, bottom, left, right, front, or back? Yeah, it's the left side, ABE. So what side would be parallel to the left side and contain point D? Katrina? CDH. Yeah, CDH. You can name that plane using any three letters you want in any order you want. It just has to involve the letters C, D, H, and G. Pick three of them, list them in any order. So CDH is perfect. Plane CDH. Okay, any questions on, on that? That is the only plane that's parallel to AD and contains point D. All right. All right so now we're going to look at some postulates. Okay, are postulates statements that need to be proven? No. Nope. So we don't have to prove these. These are just facts that are given to us, and we're going to use them to do other things. Okay, there's two postulates that are very similar. One's called the parallel postulate, one is the perpendicular postulate. Okay, they're both on page 130. Okay, as we go on, okay, now we're in chapter 3, sometimes there's like six or seven of these postulates in a section. So, you're responsible for knowing them, but it's up to you how you want to write them down. I'll reference the page that it's on, but sometimes it's going to be a ton of writing if you have to copy it all from the board. So you might want to go back sometimes and just get it from the book. The page for this one is 130. It's page 130. So the parallel postulate, very simply, it says if you have a line and you have a point not on the line, then there is exactly one line that you can draw through that point parallel to that given line. Okay, that's the parallel postulate. Okay, there's also another postulate, very similar to it, perpendicular postulate. And it basically says exactly the same thing, except change the words parallel to perpendicular. So if I was writing this in my notes, what I might do is put parallel and then next to it, perpendicular postulate, and then in the description, put parallel, and then in parentheses, put perpendicular. So you don't have to rewrite everything twice. Or put it right above it or something. And on the same page? Yep, that's also on page 130. Okay, so same postulate again, except perpendicular. If you have a line and a point not on the line, there is exactly one line you can draw through that point that would be perpendicular to the given line. And I think this is the one I'm going to do a construction with you. I'm going to show you how to do that one, and I might test you on how to do that one as well. Does everybody have at least one of them copied down? That way you can just fill, you know, put the words perpendicular in parentheses above it, or you can write it twice if you want. Okay. All right, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use a compass and anything you have that's straight um, to draw a line. Okay, so first thing you need is a diagram to do this with. Okay, so draw, draw a line. Okay, it has to be you know, nice and straight. And then put a point somewhere above it. Okay, so you don't you don't need the compass for um, for this part. Okay, and before you do it, I want you to watch me do it because sometimes you make a mistake when you set the size of your compass, and then you have to go back and fix it. So, if you watch me do it first, and I make a mistake, then maybe you can use that to avoid making the mistake yourself. Okay, so draw a line, put a point somewhere above it. It, what we're going to do is we're going to place the compass at point P. Okay, so I'm going to open it up a little bit. How much I open it? Well, I'll show you what we have to do. We're going to place the compass at point P, and then we have to draw an arc that intersects the line twice. So when I place the compass here, the arc that I draw has to intersect the line twice. Right? If I make if I make it too big, it, it's not going to hit the line twice. So let me just try it like that. That's good. Okay, and it's just an arc. Okay, you do not need to uh, complete the circle. Okay, in fact, when you're doing a construction, uh, it shouldn't be a complete circle. It should just be an arc. So that's the first step. I'm going to label the two intersection points A and B. That one's A. That one's B. OK, next. We're going to draw another arc. Okay. This time, the center is going to be A. So we're going to put our compass on point A. Okay, and it doesn't matter if you use exactly the same size arc you did before. In fact, I'll change mine a little bit just to show you that it doesn't matter. Whoops. So I'll make it a little bigger. So I made my, I made my arc a little bigger this time. Okay, I'm going to put my compass on point A. And I'm going to draw an arc. Oops. Okay, now this is the important part. You're going to move your compass to point B, and you're going to draw an arc again. But now you can't change the size. Okay, so whatever size you used a second ago, be careful you don't move it. Bring it over to point B, and then draw an arc again. Now we're, we're done with the compass. Okay. Now we could, I think we said label this Q, the point where those arcs cross. Now we're going to use a straight edge to connect P to Q. Okay, so take. Take your straight edge, and if you've drawn these arcs correctly, you now have a vertical line going right through point P, <coughs> and it's perpendicular to the original line. Okay, to see a little bit nicer, you could erase the um, construction marks, but I don't want you to do that. I want to see the construction marks, and that's how I'm going to grade it on the test. Okay. If I don't see these arcs drawn, then I know you didn't know how to do it with a compass. Okay. What I'll do just for a second is show you how it looks without the marks. So line AB and line PQ are perfect, perfectly perpendicular without any measure. 
Okay, any questions on that construction? Anybody need to see a step again? Everybody, everybody got it? All right, so at most, I'll probably test you on um, two of those kinds of problems on the test. Right, we didn't do the, um, the one where you have a line and a point not on it and you construct something parallel. Um, we, we could have, but we're not, we're not going to do that one. We're just going to do the perpendicular. Okay, any questions on the construction? All right. Anybody run into a problem like they made a mistake and had to erase it and try an arc of a different size? Okay, sometimes that happens. Okay, you don't have the right size arc. But you just adjust it and, and you try again. All right, so next thing we're going to talk about is what's called a transversal. Okay, basically, what a transversal is, is it's a line that intersects two or more other lines in the same plane. and at different points. Okay, so we're going to start off specifically with two lines. Then I'm going to draw a line that goes across both of them. The line that's going to cut across them, that's called the transversal. And we're going to create eight different angles by doing that. Okay, so here's an example. The two lines that look more vertical, those are the two lines. The line that looks horizontal, okay, that's my transversal. And I've labeled the eight angles that were created. Okay, these eight angles have special names. Okay. Anybody know the special names for any of these angles? Transversal angles. Okay, good guess. You might think because they're created by a transversal that has that name in it, but they don't. Let's look at them. So the first type of angles that are created are called corresponding. Okay, let me give you the definition and then see if you can figure out which angles are corresponding in that picture. It's angles that occupy the same relative position. Okay, angles that occupy the same kind of corresponding position. So for example, angle one is above the transversal and to the left of the line. Okay. What's another angle that's above the transversal and to the left of the line, besides angle one? Luke? Angle five. Angle five. So angles one and five are called corresponding. Anybody see that there's a few other pairs here? What else would be corresponding, Katrina? Two and six would be corresponding. Yep. What else? Anthony? Well, one is above and to the left. Eight is below and to the right. So one and eight do have a special name, but they're not corresponding. No, I said four and eight. Oh, four and eight. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, below the transversal and to the right, below and to the right. Very good. And there's one more pair. We have, I think, one and five, two and six, four and eight. Three and seven. Three is above and to the right. Seven is above and to the right. Okay, and those are all the pairs that we just named. Okay, those are called corresponding angles. Okay, next are alternate exterior angles. These are angles that are outside of the two lines that you've drawn and on opposite sides of the transversal. So in our case, our transversal is horizontal. So one's above, one's below. So angles that lie outside of the two lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. Anybody see a pair of angles that fits that description? They're outside of the two lines. And one's above, one's below. Katrina? Seven and two. Seven and two. Yep. And there's one more pair. Kier? One and one and eight. Yep. Okay. 
Those are angles that are alternate exterior. We also have another type called alternate interior. Anybody think they can tell me what the definition of that would be based on the definition for alternate exterior? Denver? Yeah, angles that are, that are inside the two lines, and that's exactly it, and on opposite sides of the transversal. Those are called the alternate interior angles. Okay, so we'll go back up, take a look at our um, diagram, see if we can figure out the alternate interior angles. Okay, what would be a pair of alternate interior angles there? Five and four, yep. They're interior, one's above, one's below. And one other pair, yep. Three and six. Those are your alternate interior angles. Okay, and then there's one more type called consecutive interior. Anybody have a guess what this one means? We already know what the interior part means. But this time they're consecutive interior instead of alternate interior. There's really only one other option for it to be. Yep? So the two, they're, they're above or below this, the line and the inside? Yeah, so they're on the same side of the transversal. And they're both inside the two lines that you draw. So what would be a pair of consecutive interior angles there? They're on the same side of the transversal and inside the two lines. Oh, Owen? So we're looking for angles that are inside the two lines. Name, name all the angles that are inside the two lines for me. Three, four, five, and six. Yep, three, four, five, and six. And now we're looking for a pair that are on the same side of the transversal. Three and five. Three and five, and four and six. Four and six. Very good. Those are your two pairs. Okay, another term that um, I won't really be using but they're also called same side interior angles. We're going to call them consecutive interior angles. Okay. Now, I want to go back up, look at the diagram. And I want to look at the two lines that I drew that, that are not the transversal. Is there any, any special relationship between those two lines? Are they, are they parallel? No. What we're um, eventually going to get into is when you draw two lines that are parallel and intersected by a transversal, all kinds of special things happen. For example, this angle and that angle happen to be exactly the same. Alternate exterior. Uh, what else? We'll call this angle x and y. X and Y would add up to 180 degrees there. Okay? It would add up to 180. And there's other, there's other relationships too. Okay? So when, when you do have parallel lines right there, you get more, some special relationships that happen. Okay? We'll, we'll look more at that later. For now, the two lines that you draw that aren't the transversal, they could just be any, any two lines. They don't have to be parallel. Okay, so what I want to do using, using that diagram is list all the pairs of angles you just did on the previous page. Okay, but try this one on your own. Okay. Corresponding, alternate exterior, alternate interior, and consecutive interior. Okay, so give, give that a shot, see if you can name them all. 
and I think we'll, we'll finish up with this one. Okay, so the first pair I asked you to find are the corresponding. Okay, corresponding is always four, four pairs. Okay, what's, um, what's one pair of corresponding angles here? Sarah? Two and six. Yep, angle two okay. and angle six. Okay, what's uh, someone else, another pair of corresponding? Connor? Four, <coughs> four and eight. Another pair? About Selena? One, one and five, yep. Angle one, angle five, and one more pair. Anthony? Three and seven. Three and seven. <coughs> okay, that's the pair, that's the uh, category that has the most. Okay, alternate exterior. Okay, what's one pair of alternate exterior? Denver? Angle two and angle seven. Two is above the transversal and outside. Seven is below and outside. Above and below, that makes it alternate. Okay, and one more pair. Angle two and angle seven. Tanner? Yep, one is below the transversal, it's outside. Eight is above. Okay, and that's it for alternate exterior. Okay, alternate interior. Luke? Uh, four and five. Four and five. Four is above, five is below, but they're both inside. Angle four, angle five. Okay, and another pair of alternate ex interior. How about uh, Eric? Uh, what? So we got four and five. Three and six. Okay, three is above. Three is below it. Six is above, and they're both inside. And lastly, the consecutive interior. <coughs> so, interior we got to pick from the angles three, four, five, and six. Those are the interior. Okay, so out of those two, go ahead, Brian. What one pair that's consecutive? Three and five. Remember, another name for consecutive is same side. Oh. Three and five. And what's the last pair? Yep. Four and six. Four and six. Okay. So those are the different kind of angles that are created when you have two lines cut by a transversal. So the homework tonight uh, will be on 132. Are we going to have to do any six, uh, 6 to 19 all, 21 to 26 all, 41 and 42. Okay, as far as um, constructions, let's take a quick look. Um, I don't see, quick, looking quickly, I don't see any constructions. Okay, and for MCAS, do questions 7 through 12. So everything except the open response.